Baltimore. Sports Illustrated reported yesterday that there's a glitch in the new Madden 20 video game that makes Lamar Jackson more unstoppable as a runner than Michael Vick in his prime. <laughs> Rumor is that Ravens head coach John Harbaugh installed the glitch. The glitch is the Ravens' new Lamar Jackson-friendly playbook. Former Ravens coach and NFL Network analyst Brian Billick said Baltimore's new offense will look like no NFL offense we've ever seen before. When asked about Billick's comments, Harbaugh said, I would kind of agree with that. I really do. When told that Cam Newton's career high for, 100, for carries is 139, Harbaugh said, I'd bet the over on that one. I'd bet the over for sure on that one. Harbaugh then predicted that the Ravens are going to usher in a new era of football. He compared the Ravens to the 1980 San Francisco 49ers. He said the game was probably revolutionized with Bill Walsh and Joe Montana. What's the next era going to be? We're about to find out. Let me tell you what the Ravens have already discovered. Lamar Jackson isn't an NFL-level passer. That's why the Ravens are about to revolutionize the game of football. That's why Lamar Jackson is about to unleash Baltimore's Star Trek offense, an offense that will go boldly where no man has gone before. Mm -hmm. Let me quote Spock. Logic is the beginning of wisdom, not the end. That means in the world of football, illogic is the beginning of failure, not the playoffs. John Harbaugh and the Ravens are going to ask little Lamar Jackson to do what Cam Newton couldn't do, what cost Robert Griffin III his career as a starter, they're going to ask Lamar to run the ball like he's Barry Sanders rather than throw the ball like he's a developing NFL quarterback. The Ravens think they're going to bring a college offense to the NFL. I'm going to set the over-under at week eight when Bobby Wagner, Vontez Burfick, Luke Keekley, or some other angry middle linebacker puts Lamar Jackson on injured reserve. This offensive scheme is a major red flag. It hints to me that Harbaugh wants a new quarterback before he gets too deep into the four-year contract extension he signed in January. Harbaugh is playing a very clever game of contract chess. He bents Joe Flacco and turned to the Lamar running game to make the playoffs last year and, and secure an extension. Now Harbaugh is going all the way in on the Lamar option offense. It's a brilliant strategy. The Lamar Jackson lovers are gonna love it until the very moment he's carted off the field. I can hear them now. This is a great what Baltimore is doing. Yes! They're playing to the strengths of the athletic quarterback. This is long overdue. Harbaugh is woke. When the offense fails, Harbaugh, Baltimore's new general manager, and the scouting department can begin their search for the next Patrick Mahomes or Baker Mayfield. The Lamar Jackson experiment has an expiration date of Thanksgiving. The NFL quarterback position cannot be revolutionized. It's played from the pocket. Oh, whoa. All right, joining the desk now are Fox Sports NFL analyst Greg Jennings and Michael Vick. I'll start with you, Marcellus. Is this new offense, this revolutionary offense, the best strategy for Lamar Jackson? Absolutely. Um, it, it's a smart play right here. Uh, if you're looking at his skill set and what you're trying to get out of him and what's best for this team. Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. We know that, right? So... Good. Sometimes you look at someone and say, you know what, we've got to do something different because of what we need. Uh, and this revolution is going to be televised. We're going to see it <laughs> every Sunday. And here we go. There's three principles I want to highlight that they need to keep in mind if this is going to work. One, you got to be creative. Two, you got to be consistent. And three, you got to commit. Why you got to be creative? It's a simple mathematical proposition to get the quarterback involved in the running game. That's why everyone flirts with it. That's why every time you see someone who's a dual threat, you all of a sudden see the naked bootlegs. You all of a sudden see them running design plays just because of the mathematics. Same example that happened in the NBA with the analytics and the three-point shot. A lot of people say, oh, that's not basketball. Oh, that's not smart. But the numbers keep suggesting, yeah, it is. Throw them up there 40, 50 times a game. So you got to be creative. 10 on 11 doesn't sound as good as 11 on 11 in the running game. Get the quarterback involved. Two, consistent. Remember the Wildcat was out there and it worked, and then the D coordinators finally said, all right, we got a coach now. Fine, let's stop this Wildcat. And they shut it down. And then you know what happens? 
you just see every now and then a quarterback go out there as a dual threat, and you see it coming as a defender. We know what it is. You only got three plays designed for this guy. You got to be consistent on top of being creative. Last but not least, commit. When the coordinators do stop it, when we do see it coming, you got to go against that avalanche, go against those naysayers, the criticism, and be consistent with your commitment. You do all those things, I see it could work because of his skill set and what this team needs. Marcellus, so I'm loving what you're saying as far as the, the commitment because, look, if Jim is saying this, or John is saying that this is going to be a, a new era in football, then, look, I can look at that and appreciate that because we don't know what they're in the, in the meeting rooms, you know, cooking up. I know Greg Norman is an amazing play caller and having a guy like Tyrod Taylor and Kylan Kaepernick, you know, back in the day, he, he knows how to put things together to make a mobile quarterback you know, be very successful. Now, I think this is going to have to happen in phases. You know, every quarter of the season, we're going to have to watch this closely because, listen, if they're going to run the ball effectively and they're going to run Lamar the way they're saying they're going to run Lamar, then, listen, the first quarter of the season is going to be rough. Second quarter, they're going to have to come with a different game plan. He's going to have to throw the ball in this offense in order to win football games regardless of what. There's no quarterback that can line up I don't care who you are. You know, Cam Newton looked like he could do it just based on his physical stature. Looked like he can will himself or his team to win each and every week. It's just not possible. You can't run the football that much the way that they are saying as far as a new era. But it's going to have to be some passing game that's included in that. Um, I think this is a brilliant uh, pr approach when it comes to John Harbaugh and this team. When you, it's nothing, it's not new. When guys have something that they do really well, you know what? We should probably put them in the best situation mm -hmm. to expose that, to allow them to showcase that. That's all they're doing. They bring on Mark Ingram. They, they already run the ball really well and effectively. So they've committed to being who they are. They've always been that. Now they understand, you know what? There's a progression to this quarterback position. We don't have a Patrick Mahomes that's going to come out here and just sling the ball everywhere. 30... I would say 27 of the 32 teams don't have that. Hmm. But they do have a quarterback that will make you honor him. And so why not do what's best for him in allowing him to utilize his legs? Is he going to have to be smart? Yes. But that's the name of the game. It's a progressional growth period that they're going through. I, I, I think here's the thing that's getting overlooked that, and please correct me, Mike, if I'm wrong. It's not just, is he going to get hit and potentially hurt? It's what the hits and the running do to you mentally in terms of as a quarter. A quarterback has to control the other 10 teammates, tell the, get the plays in, call the plays, get them in the right formation, sometimes read the defense mm. in terms of setting the pa uh, pass protection schemes, what coverages. In college... They play two or three coverages. It's a much simpler game. They look over to the sideline. The coach tell them what to do. The, the, they got one or two reads. Yeah, blah, the blah, cards blah. Up. There's less thinking. <laughs> right. it's just, when yeah. you're out of breath, and again, Marcellus knows this, and both of y'all know this, mm -hmm. how many times you see stars in a game mm. and because you're a little woozy. Yeah. That, you can handle it. You can handle it. The quarterback can't be seeing stars throughout the entire game and effectively do his job. Yeah, just speaking from experience, I mean, you got to get stronger as the game go on as a, at the quarterback position. And when you get knocked down, you know, it's, it's tough enough just being in the pocket, getting knocked down, having to get up. Then you got your design runs where you got to run the football, get hit, get up. And, and those are things that go, that's going to have to be taken into account. That's why I say this will have to be monitored quarterly throughout the season. I, so I got a question for you then, Mike, because... You are the reason why this is even an option for most of these right. quarterbacks. What was more of a tasking hit? From the pocket, being hit blindsided, or when you knew I'm running, I'm scrambling, and I'm going to come into contact with a hit with the guy, but I'm going to initiate it, and I know it's coming? Yeah, when, when I knew it was coming, that was, that was more taxing. That, that, I felt that a little bit more. Um, because you know the contact is there. You know you... You overexerting yourself to get a first down. To, to pick up extra yardage was part of my thing that I didn't do as well as I was supposed to do in protecting myself. If Lamar Jackson can protect himself in this process, I don't know how. Then they'll come out clean. The thing is, is just when you're a mobile quarterback and you running, you 
you laying it all out in the line. You really laying it all out in the line, line to, for, for your team and, your, and, and to make I, things happen. I, I think there's a different energy you tap into. And Marcellus, you played running back. When you were yeah. running back, it's damn near like being the middle linebacker. You get yourself yeah. hyped because you know you're going to go through this pounding, blah, blah, blah. And Cam used to tap into that to a point. And now he's mm. starting to tap out. It's hard to play the quarterback position with the mentality you need to run the ball. They talking about, a, you know, it sounds to me like 10 times a game they may be trying to run it. That would be 160. That's more than 100. That's a lot to ask. Yeah, uh, but we right. have to take Brian Billick uh, for his words. In, in a sense, he said this is going to look different than we've ever seen it. So right now, we can't even imagine what that is. This yeah. may not be design runs. This may not be quarterback yeah. keeper up the middle. So this said, may be a new era. Let's take advantage. That's the over on 140 runs. OK, but think about it. How many of these runs could be designed that could bootlegs? You slide protected by the quarterback rules. You don't get touched. That's one carry untouched. You can do that. You go short boundary runs. You say, hey, we're going to use the boundary as obviously another defender, but we're going to use them also as an asset. Yeah. Tap out. Another few yards there. There is a way that you can get half of these carries maybe untouched. Um, Russell Wilson is probably our best example of someone who safely runs the football from yes. the quarterback position. Former baseball player, knows when to slide, knows how to slide. If he's learning those attributes, I think this is a great thing because the only thing that really derailed him last year and I think it got exaggerated, is that they played the L.A. Chargers twice in three weeks. Mm -hmm. And the L.A. Chargers went outside the NFL defensive playbook and designed the defense to shut this guy down in the playoffs when that's what you're supposed to do, yeah. take away plan A. Yeah. Let's be careful to say that this didn't work because he was a winning quarterback doing a minor version of what they're going to apply this year. Yeah, and, and the one thing that I will say is that, you know, teams having a chance to watch what they did last year, okay? It's going to be a different look for him. Three smart quarter, quarterback coaches in the room where you got an offensive coordinator, got a quarterback coach, you probably got a special assistant in the room. They have, they're going to have to cook it up and put plays together that's going to be, that they can outmatch the defense. I'm talking about week in and week out. Mm. I don't know, you know, where it's going to come from or how, you know, uh, how different they can make it look, but... You know, I, mean, I think just being different is going, going to be the key. In a world where we see defenders allow quarterbacks plays, passes, runs, because we're so scared to touch them, yeah. in a world where you know that that's the reality, you can manipulate that to some degree. When I used to play against Warwick Dunn, I used to just shake my head be like, how come I can't hit this dude square? Yeah, no matter what I try to do, yeah. you get in that phone booth with him, good luck touching yep. him. And I'm just saying, if someone can be unconventional and daring and say, let's apply some of this, let's manipulate these rules in this climate, maybe you get something. I, I like your point, Marcellus, and it's one I... They're doing this out of necessity. Mm -hmm. I, I think if, the, if Harbaugh believed in him as a passer, I don't think they would be doing this. I think this is some proof that Harbaugh's like, I, I don't know if we can get it done with him as a pocket pass. So I'm, I'm glad you get to that point because I know Lamar Jackson, if he's listening to this, mm. he's probably laughing because, as you know, you weren't just a running quarterback. No. You can throw the ball. Like, he can throw the ball. He just hasn't been asked not to... Not like Mike, but go no, ahead. Not, no, definitely not like Mike, uh -huh. but he hasn't been asked <laughs> to do there. that because of what he does so well. And so for us to think that he's just not going to throw the ball and that John Harbaugh doesn't believe in him as a progressive... Right. I'm developing him as a thrower, but I'm going to take advantage of what he does so well right now it's, I don't buy that. I think he's all in on the developmental process, but I'm going to take advantage of what he does really well right now. Yeah, if people need to go back and watch that first L.A. Chargers game when he caught them off guard. Yes! Oh, yeah, he yeah, yeah. Yes! <laughs> Ask L.A. Yeah. Chargers when they were fighting for the division. They were out there fully loaded trying to keep pace with Kansas City, and Lamar Jackson beat them more with his arm than mm -hmm. he did with his leg. Just think about what this can look like if they are able to implement some form of passing game into whatever this new era of football is going to be. This guy can be dangerous. So, I mean, what we're looking at can be, like, what's, what we'll see in the next generation to come. Let me ask this very quickly. I see it as a boom or bust. Either this is going to work really well or it's going to be a total failure. I don't see a middle ground. Mm. You got to play to your strength. <sighs> That's you tough. Play that is. Strength. That That's is. Tough, I mean, what is, listen. What was last year? What would you call that? Oh, that, was, that worked. Okay, they well, made the playoffs. You got another year to build on that? I say boom then. All right, coming up, Jerry Jones is starting to play hardball with Ezekiel Elliott, but will it backfire? We get into that. Next!
And don't forget to check us out on the Fox Sports Channel on Sirius XM.